Hello everyone. Saidati wa sadati. Ahlan bikum. Yushrifuni jiddan wujudi ma'akum al I'm happy to virtually be with all of you and thrilled by the recent strengthening of ties in our region. Although I can't be there in person, I look forward to visiting Dubai soon. This conference is great proof of the vision of peace, security and prosperity in the Middle East and around the world, described in the Abraham Accords. The recent ties between our regions are evidence of a changing world. What's also changing is how organizations are securing their most valuable assets. At CyberArk, we help the world's leading organizations protect their critical data and infrastructure from the leading cause of breaches, compromised identities and credentials. Since we last spoke at CyberTech in 2020, it's been quite a year. Organizations are increasingly adopting new technologies while facing an increase in the volume and the severity of cyber attacks. Digital transformation, DevOps methodologies, and cloud migration initiatives are moving full steam ahead. The COVID-19 pandemic dissolved any remaining notions of a traditional network perimeter. And hacker innovation. Hackers have taken notice, resulting in high-profile front page breaches, all of them centered on compromised identity. Now let's start with digital transformation. It's not slowing down. The global trend towards DevOps and cloud services is expanding the attack surface rapidly. This results in the proliferation of privileges across human and non-human identities. Let me explain. In 2020, for the first time, organizations invested more in cloud infrastructure than in on-premise data centers. Separately, in today's world, nearly every company relies on software engineering. DevOps teams are taking center stage and delivering powerful advantages for their organizations. These teams are also under fire from attackers. At CyberArk, we recently surveyed over 100 security executives at large enterprises and found that 33% are seeing an increase in attacks directed against developers and cloud engineering. And COVID-19 changed the reality for many businesses. As a result of the pandemic, 90% of organizations have accelerated their plans to adopt cloud services. Cloud providers are adding new services faster than ever. This even further expands the attack surface, as organizations must securely manage the permissions that grant access to their cloud workloads. At CyberArk, we recently launched Cloud Entitlements Manager, a new solution to address this challenge. Since we launched the solution in November, we now track over 2,500 new permissions to access the leading cloud services. These trends show no sign of stopping. And attackers show no sign of letting up either. Hackers are stepping up their game to compromise privileged access to complex IT environments. Landmark breaches like the Twitter attack, SolarWinds Orion, and most recently Microsoft Exchange prove that attackers are evolving and innovating to achieve their goals. Identity compromise is the common denominator in all of these attacks, from the relatively disorganized group that breached Twitter through social engineering to the advanced persistent threats behind the exchange breach. Privileged access is almost always a factor in the attack chain. There could be no better example than the SolarWinds Orion breach. At CyberArk, we believe this breach will reshape cybersecurity for years to come. This analysis from our experts at CyberArk Labs shows the attack chain here on the slide. Attackers gained a foothold by infecting the SolarWinds Orion software pipeline, then lay dormant for months. Then they moved laterally within the environments of SolarWinds customers. Finally, they escalated privileges to compromise high value assets. In the wake of this breach, it's more important than ever to assume breach and embrace defense in depth controls. This includes carefully examining software supply chains, authenticating all identities, and carefully controlling and monitoring privilege access. One of the primary attack vectors of SolarWinds breach involved a Golan SAML method. We're proud to highlight that our threat research team at CyberArk Labs first discovered this technique in 2017. In a Golan SAML attack, hackers bypassed their identity provider allowing them to impersonate any user in an organization and gain their access. With this level of surgical precision, we can no longer assume the enemy is outside the perimeter. 
Once again, organizations must assume breach and build defense in-depth security programs. But don't take our word for it. In a testimony before the U.S. Senate, the CEO of SolarWinds clarified the key ingredients for organizations recovering from the breach. His words are powerful. For any solution to be effective, prescriptions must apply a zero-trust presumption, access provided on a least privileged basis. His testimony makes it clear that zero trust and least privilege access go hand in hand, and SolarWind itself is making least privilege, multi-factor authentication, and encryption a key part of its own software development lifecycle. And the links to privilege just don't stop. Even more recently, over 30,000 organizations suffered a breach of their Microsoft Exchange servers. While we are still learning about this attack, we know from CISA advisories that the attackers once again targeted identities with privileged access. Unauthenticated attackers used four vulnerabilities to gain privileged access and compromise trust and identity within the targeted organizations. We now know the initial attackers also created web shells, allowing additional attackers to gain privileged access to steal data and credentials, upload malware, and use impacted servers as launch pads for further attacks. At CyberArk, we recently surveyed security executives at large enterprises on the issue of identity-related attacks. Here's what we learned. First, credential theft is more of an issue than ever. 97% of senior security executives are seeing an increase in credential theft. Second, end users are increasingly being targeted. More than half of organizations report increased attacks on their employees. Securing employee endpoints remains a key security priority and an operational challenge. The takeaway is that seniors executives view identity and access management controls as their top priority for making zero trust a reality. As I mentioned at the start of my talk, since last year at Cybertech, the world has changed quite a bit. Identity is the new battleground, and at CyberArk, we've evolved to embrace it. Our mission is to provide a modern approach to identity security centered on privilege. We help our customers not only defend against increasingly complex attacks, we also enable their digital transformations by implementing new technologies faster, smarter, and more securely. In May of 2020, we acquired Adaptive, a leading identity as a service provider, to make this vision a reality. We completed the acquisition while many of our employees were in lockdown at the start of the pandemic. We saw an opportunity. Identity is more critical than ever to securing the enterprise. Today, we're evolving our portfolio into a unified, comprehensive identity security platform centered on privilege. Our platform secures all identities, human, machine, remote vendor, and all privileged pathways to sensitive workloads. We've integrated single sign-on, multi-factor authentication, and lifecycle management controls to protect workforce and customer identities. But privileged access management remains at the heart of our strategy. We protect an organization's most critical assets, extending least privilege from the endpoint to Windows and Linux infrastructure, and now across multi-cloud environments with our Cloud Entitlements Manager. Identity security also extends across DevOps, our secrets management solutions protect machine identities in DevOps pipelines and homegrown applications. It's been a monumental year for CyberArk. Last year, I presented this slide as evidence of our growth. Today, we've grown from 5,000 to 6,600 customers and have expanded into 20 new countries. We help over 50% of the Fortune 500 and over 35% of the Global 2000 secure their mission-critical workloads. And we keep an eye on the future. We invest heavily in our CyberArk labs in Israel to research and discover emerging threats like the Golden Samuel attack vector behind the SolarWinds attack. Our innovation labs teams develop solutions that solve emerging customer needs. Cloud Entitlements Manager, our newest solution, is a great example. True security comes from people, process, and technology. We invest heavily in our global customer success and professional services capabilities to ensure that customers carefully configure their solutions and are positioned for the long run. Finally, 
We work closely in partnership with over 150 technology vendors through our C-Cubed Alliance. This allows us to develop integrated solutions for our customers' complex needs. If I could leave you with one message, is that we must adapt to today's changing threat landscape quickly. We must, as I've said, take an assume breach mindset. Gardner recently published a great top 10 lessons report on SolarWinds that would serve any organization well. Here are some of the highlights. First, even the most security-focused organizations can be breached. Gardner specifies that privileged service account tools should be monitored. Organizations can detect the attacks and gain an advantage through anomaly monitoring and directory hygiene. Gartner directly recommends organizations use PAM solutions to protect privilege access wherever it exists. Least privilege is essential, as was highlighted in the U.S. Senate hearings. Similarly, machine identities must be secured in DevOps pipelines and in homegrown applications. End users are under attack. Security on the endpoint is a must. Implementation and configuration of security controls is extremely important. Developers are also under attack. Their endpoints must be secured. Finally, the software supply chain cannot be trusted by default. I'd urge all organizations to consider all of these controls. As we explore a new era of global business, we must work together to secure it. It's extremely rewarding to be part of this event once again and contribute to the vibrant cybersecurity ecosystem in Israel, in Dubai, and throughout the world. I look forward to seeing all of you in person soon. Shukran Jazilan, wassalam alaikum. Thank you.